I would like to talk about the Cube Hot End from Luke's lab. I bought this one uh, myself. Luke did not sponsor this one. And um, I run VZBot two LEDs on my printers. And I was looking for a way to mount these two together. Um, and there was no way that I was able to mount it using the um, default adapter. The main problem with this is if you want to use a cube with the um, VZBot style uh, toolet, the VZBot toolet, the extruder gets mounted from the bottom and the um, hot end gets mounted as well from the bottom. Where other printers would mount the hot end from the top and then the ex um, extruder from the top. So making these two compatible, um, not very likely as it is at the moment. Um, I also thought about modifying the piece and this part, if you buy your cube, this part will be mounted at the top. So it looks like that. Of course, it's installed properly with all the screws in it. And trying to modify this, meaning you would have to hand cut uh, these pieces here these are threaded, so you can actually drill uh, or thread a screw, I meant, in here. But it's all, all parts or things that we don't need on a VZBot or VZBot style um, tool head. So I uh, sat down, I took my whole tool head apart. Uh, I, took the, I took the cube apart. I started measuring and I came up with a drawing and the post arrived today. So this is what arrived in the post. A adapter for the cube so that you can mount it onto your VZBot toolet. It's the um, same measurements as the original. So these are exactly the same. We also hold them together. Um, they are the same, the whole positions are the same and I'll show you when I quickly just do a quick assembly how easy it is. So if you have a conduct cube, you can just remove this top part of your, of your existing installation. And then you can take the new adapter. This was produced by Melo 3D and Melo will have this shortly in the online shop for everybody to buy. The inside hole is the same diameter as your heat break. So you can just slide it on and just give it a left and right twist. It sits exactly as snug as the one, as the original one. So you just twist it into position. I'm not going to put screws in because I want to show you guys that the holes line up um, perfectly. So also at the back. So you got your three mounting holes, the same like on the original mounts. It's also the three mounting holes. So you would install these three screws again. And then over here, I've got a old version a VZBot top plate uh, with a, a water-cooled hextruder on it. And these two will then join together like that. Also, the cutouts for the... Uh, uh, extruder screws have been added so as I'm holding this now together I can feel there's no twist in it they really hook in together let me just see if I can do this on camera so and then you would just use your normal screws Just going to add one for now, but that is what it's going to look like when we are done. So you have your conduct um, adapter for the VZBot and your cube connected to that. And that is, that is then what your tool lid is going to look like. Please let me know in the comments below, I only made the conduct version for the water-cooled um, extruder. But please let me know if you would also be interested in a air-cooled version of this. Then also the other question, do the other screws line up? So I didn't mention that. You can just push then the bottom part up 
And also here we can see that the holes line up, meaning the heat break can move far enough up into the uh, mounting uh, block so you can align all of your screws again and that is what it's going to look like. Also what I can definitely recommend doing, just remove this again, is to cut a piece of PTF tube. I measured it, it is about 15 millimeters. So if you cut a PTFE tube, insert it into your hextruder, and then just join these two back together again, and then you can connect it as we did before. That will definitely help your filament to not get stuck somewhere on the way down to the, um, to the nozzle. So I've added the uh, second screw into the adapter for the cube on the um, um, extruder and the top plate of the VisiBot. Just going to put a screw in here just to keep the, um, the heat block that it doesn't slip down. And I'm going to take a piece of filament, just put it up in here. Then we can see with ease, um, it didn't get stuck or anything. I mean, this is smooth. So the alignment also of the filament is exactly lined up to the exit of the extruder. Um, you will also notice that looking like this in the front, maybe you can notice that this um, the, the plate is a few millimeters forward. That's just the design of the cube, how it was designed uh, with a hole more or less in the center of the cube, where with a Goliath, it is a little bit back and of course lined up with the, with the front over there. But yeah, all, overall, this is the... Um, the look that you can expect if you want to mount this onto your toolet um, and it will also work on any of the other mods that I made doesn't matter if you want to use it on a um, hybrid version so this is the mammoth toolet uh, hybrid version because at the top we have the same mounting holes and this is actually a VZBot top plate uh, that's why hybrid 3D printed and aluminium part. So it will fit on this one as well if you are using something like this. And then also in an upcoming video later on this week, I will introduce the SLM uh, toolet from Mammoth 3D. Here as well, we have two mounting holes uh, left and right. So it's the same setup as you have on the, um, on the uh, VisiBot plate. These are exactly the same holes. So even this adapter will work on other uh, products that I produce or other mods that I've, I've created that you can mount the same mounting plate onto this one. I hope this was very helpful. Uh, also considering maybe giving Luke's lab a try, trying out the uh, cube. I know it is a very expensive um, hot end. But the finishing of it is just beautiful. It's, it's really well made, very solid. And also, I think with the, with the two screws at the top, plus those two other screws, you, I mean, it's so hard to explain on video, but you can really feel them click in position. So I'd, I'm not scared that this is going to twist or anything. Uh, you've got a solid connection and, of course, a big plate, thick piece of aluminium to conduct the heat into the top plate so that the water-cooled extruder can transport the heat off. But I will be running this with a 140-watt uh, heating cartridge. So, of course, like this, I don't have to worry that the heat will not conduct through the top plate and then being uh, transported off with the water. So, yeah, if you enjoy videos like this, please give me a like. Maybe you consider subscribing to the channel. There's a, another video coming where I'll be talking more about SLM parts. So if you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks and speak to you in the next video.